Hello and welcome to an even more different episode of Creative Techniques, where I'm going to give you 10 tips for how to use a Ronin S with a Panasonic GH5. Tip number one is to get to know the focus controls on the Ronin S. Now if you want, you can flick into manual focus mode. There we go. And in manual focus mode, I can now use the focus wheel on the side of the Ronin S. I'm actually filming on a Ronin S right now. And I can adjust this manually. If you've got focus peaking, you can then get to a pretty good position and you know it's not going to go in or out of focus. It's not going to hunt for focus. Now, if you like manual focus but still want autofocus on request, then that is entirely possible. You need to look at the record button on the Ronin S and push it halfway down. So if I move quite close, I can focus on request, move away, focus on request again. Now you can set the GH5 to do this with the uh, AF AE lock button on the back. You just set that in the menus to AF on and you can get that without the Ronin S, but it's very convenient uh, to not have to manually focus and not have to rely on auto either. There is a happy middle ground. Right now there is a limitation to this in that every time you press the record button on the gimbal all the way in to actually start or stop recording, it will also autofocus. Now that's potentially a bit of a problem. Obviously you can manually focus after you start recording, but just be aware that it could be a little bit of an issue. I'd like to see the little button that's currently unused in this mode that's on the side of the follow focus potentially used to autofocus on request in the future. All right, number two is uh, to get yourself an L bracket. Now the L bracket I've got here means I've got two hands to support the gimbal. Now obviously an L grip could help you with any gimbal. Uh, the heavier it is, the more useful it will be. And I can't tell you where to get mine because I've had mine for at least 25 years. So get yourself an L grip, which has um, a uh, tripod mount on the bottom of its own screw and then you can continue uh, using the existing Ronin tripod with the Ronin grip above. Number three is to explore the different modes on the gimbal. That little M button will flick you between three preset modes and holding it down puts you into sports mode and all of those can be useful. You can use the app to change what these modes mean and you want to consider how fast the gimbal will move and how much you need to move to get the gimbal to decide to follow your movements. Sometimes you want the whole thing to move quite slowly but to stay quite tracked to your movements. Sometimes you want it to move quickly but be resistant to moving in the first place. You'll need to experiment to get these right. And you'll also want to probably dedicate a mode to let you use the infamous roll system which can be really fun, but also is a bit of a party trick. Now, that roll mode is cool, and it is worth using from time to time, but you need to be aware of a limitation. And that's that the gimbal isn't necessarily going to be rotating around the center of the lens. So roll mode can be cool, and it's actually more useful than I thought it would be, but you've got to be really aware of that limitation know that you won't be able to always keep the content you're filming in dead center. One other thing you'll want to activate in the menus is push mode. Now you can set this up so it works in some modes and not others, but what it means is you can just grab the camera and move it around and it stays put. There we go. Still out of focus because I'm in manual focus mode, but this is a really nice way to readjust the gimbal. It means that you don't always have to rely on the joystick and you can get some pretty good results without too much effort. The Ronin S can be used for time lapse in a couple of ways, either letting you position the camera where you want it or keeping the camera steady in a hyperlapse. Now both of these work fine and they don't need the Ronin app to do it. Just set the camera to its time lapse mode, keep the Ronin S app out of it. I've found it to be a little unreliable in the time lapse mode. Alternatively, you could just record VFR video, variable frame rate, at two frames a second. And both of those will produce a really nice steady time lapse. 
Now, even though the time-lapse function in the Ronin S app seems to be a little bit flaky, the motion-lapse functionality actually works quite well. With the app, you can set two or more positions, which the gimbal will move the camera between, and it will also trigger and control the camera to take stills along the way. Now, the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 can do this as well, but you'll get better quality results if you can do it with the GH5. For best results, I've found you should put the camera into time-lapse mode, use the Ronin S app to set an interval frame rate and duration that's appropriate, then put those same numbers into the GH5, but don't trigger it on the camera. Instead, trigger the motion lapse through the Ronin S app. This does seem to work and gives really nice results. Now, this is kind of a basic tip, but you may be wondering if you're going to use the Ronin all day, how do you change the battery? How do you change the cards? Because there isn't enough clearance on the right hand side of the gimbal to be able to access the battery uh, door at the bottom or the SD card on the side. And the easiest I found is to simply slide it back. You can move the little lever here to fully loosen the forward back movement of the camera, let it fall back, and then you can access both of these. As long as you remember that one number, it's easy enough to get the gimbal back into a balanced position. Tip number nine is to write down your balance settings for your common lenses. Because each time you change lenses or indeed need to pack the gimbal away into its case, you'll need to remember all four balance settings that you've used. And the last tip is that if you do want to record for a really long time, you want to go all day without changing cards or batteries, then look into a dummy battery solution. I've got an old V-mount battery, which has a D-tap or P-tap on the side, and I've got a cable which connects to a dummy battery, and it does fit on the GH5, and the cable is long enough and thin enough to not interfere with the gimbal's operations. If you're considering a gimbal, the fact that the Ronin S integrates with the GH5 so well makes it a really excellent choice if, of course, you have a GH5. If you don't have a GH5 or you want to use uh, you know, manual lenses with a physical focus pulling wheel, then maybe consider something else. Well, look, hope that helped, and I'll see you in the next video. See ya.